Hey everybody, welcome to the ninth episode of People Swap Reporting using PS Query. In this episode, we will study how to use prompts inside a PS Query. For example, let's consider this PS Query. This PS Query provides the requisition line details for a given requisition. So if we check the criteria, we have provided a specific business unit and a requisition ID. And when we run the query, we get the details for the particular requisition. So each time a user needs to get the requisition line details of a particular requisition, he needs to open this query, come to criteria tab, edit the business unit and requisition ID, and then run the query. Now, in this scenario, whenever we have a requirement that each time the runtime parameters of the query will change, there is a better way to handle this query. So consider this PS query. This is the second version of the PS query to provide the requisition line details. If we check the criteria tab, we have not hard coded any values. Rather, we have provided prompts for a business unit and requisition ID. So the benefit of this design is user does not need to do anything inside the criteria. He just needs to click on the run tab. At the run time, the query will ask the user to provide business unit and requisition ID because we have designed prompts for these two fields. So let's provide the requisition business unit and requisition ID and run the query and we have the required output. So using prompts, we can ask the user for runtime parameters and that helps us to run the query for specific transaction. So in this episode, let's understand how we can design such prompts for our PS query. So let's create prompts for business unit and requisition ID. So click on edit, select the expression to type as prompt and we can verify that the first field is the business unit. Now here, either we can create a new prompt or we can select an existing prompt. However, we do not have any existing prompts in this PS query, so we will go with creating a new prompt. So let's click on new prompt, and these are some of the prompt properties that we need to take care of. For example, our field is business unit, it's of type character and uppercase and the length of business unit is 5. If required, we can make changes in some of the properties as per our requirement. Now, this is the heading text which will appear at runtime for our D1 prompt. Let's say we want our prompt to appear as requisition view. Now, each prompt will have a unique prompt name. Now, if required, we can also enable a prompt table edit for our prompt at the time of running the PS query. By default, the edit type is no table edit. But let's say for this business unit fee, we want to have a business units table as a prompt. We can do the same. So let's say for edit type, we will select prompt table. And here we need to provide the prompt table name. So since we are working in the PeopleSoft Financials application, the prompt table will be business unit table FS. This is our required prompt table for financials business unit. Now we can also make our prompt as optional. That means at runtime, even if we do not provide value for this particular fee, our query will run. So let's uncheck this since we will require to provide a business unit. And we can also provide a default value. Let's say we want US001 to appear as a default business unit while running the query. We can do that. So let's click on OK. And as you can see, since we have created prompt for our business unit, we can see colon 1 appearing as a criteria for business unit. That means when we run the query, then this field will get the value from the first prompt at the time of running the query. That's the meaning of colon 1. Now, since we have created this prompt, we can go to prompts field 
and we can see the same prompt appearing here. So we can also create prompts from this particular prompt step. So now let's say that for the equation ID, we need to create prompt. So we can go to prompts fees and click on add prompt. From here, we need to provide the field name. So let's say the field name is the equation ID. And rest of the properties looks good. We do not require any prompt table or default value for equation unit. So let's click on OK. And as you can see, we have created prompt. Now we need to assign this prompt to the field here because the equation ID is still accepting a constant value. So how to assign prompt which is created in the prompt step to the field in the criteria? So you can click on edit. Instead of constant value for requisition, let's select prompt. And now instead of going for a new prompt, we can select the existing prompts using this icon. So let's select prompt and you can see now both the prompts appearing here. So let's click on the equation ID, click on OK. And as you can see now for the equation ID, we have a criteria of colon two. That means the second prompt value is appearing and getting linked with the requisition ID. So now let's test our query. So let's click on run. As we click on run, we get the prompts for requisition VU and requisition ID. Since we have provided default value as US001, the same is appearing here. And if you remember, we also have enabled prompt table for requisition business unit. So let's check the prompt table edit functionality. And as expected, we can see the required business unit appearings from the business unit table FS. So let's provide our requisition ID. And the query is working as expected. So this is how we can create prompts in PS query. Now let's see this use case. We have a requirement to prepare a query report to show header details of purchase orders which were created in a specific date range. And that date range is not fixed. That is why we also need to include three prompts in the report. The first prompt is PO business unit. The second prompt is PO from date. And the third prompt is PO to date. For example, a user can use this report to run a query, say for business unit US001, purchase order created from 1st of January 2023 and purchase order created till 1st of April 2023. So this is the requirement and we need to prepare a report for this requirement. So let's create a new query. Select the table name as PO header and let's select all the field. Now, the first field for which we need to create prompt is business unit. So click on criteria. Let's select prompt. Let's create a new prompt because we do not have any existing prompt. Let's give the heading text as POPU. And let's enable prompt table for our business units. So let's select edit type as prompt table and our prompt table will be business unit table for financials. Let's provide the default value as US001. And we have our first prompt created for business unit. Now regarding the date range criteria, we will use the PO date as the field for which we will provide the prompt criteria. Now, since we have a between two dates criteria, we need two prompts created. The first will be for PO from date and the second prompt will be for PO to date. So let's first create these two prompts. So let's go to prompts, click on add prompt and then let's provide the heading as PO from date. The type of this prompt will be a date because we are going to accept date as part of this prompt and the format will be none because all of the remaining formats are applicable for characters, but we are not interested in character. 
Hence, we will go with none. And there is no edit type or prompt table required. And this is a must value. Hence, we will not go with option. Now, let's click on OK. This will be the first prompt for date. Now, let's create one more prompt for a date. Click on Add Prompt. Type as date. Format as none. The heading will be PO2 date. Again, click on OK. So now we have these two prompts created for our PO dates. So now let's go to criteria. Let's add a criteria for PO date. And say condition type as between. And now let's select the last option expression expression. So here in the expression, let's select add prompt. And let's select the first form for PO from D. And now in the expression 2, let's select the second prompt PO 2D. Click on OK. And as expected, we have the two prompts created for PO date between first day and second day. Now let's test the query. Let's click on the run. We have the business unit as US001 coming as a default value. Now let's select the PO from date. Let's select some older date for older transactions. Let's say the PO from date is 1st of September 2023. Now let's select the PO2 date. Let's say it's going to be 30 of September 2023. So what this means? This means we are interested in getting the PO header details for POs belonging to the US unit US001 and those created between the two dates 1st of September 2023 to 30th of September 2023. Let's click on OK and the query ran successfully. If you see now we have all of those POs created for this particular business units between these two dates. So this is how we can create prompts for dynamically providing the criteria values in PS query. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. If you found this video helpful in understanding prompts, then please hit the like button as it really helps us to create such content. And if you are interested into more such people's of content, then please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.